I'm Zach Coplin. I'm a student from Louisiana, and my state has a creationism law. I started fighting this law when I was in high school, and this fight's now taken up, turned into a national fight for teaching good science and funding science in America. And when I came to this Catalyst, I spoke about our fight and the lessons I've learned from it and tried to impart that on the attendees of the conference. Why did you get involved in this? The Louisiana Science Education Act, which is my state's creationism law, is simply wrong. It was, it was a matter of right and wrong for me, it was a moral question, and I initially didn't think before I left. I knew that someone needed to fight it. I always assumed it would be an adult, but it needed to be fought, and I always knew that. And eventually I realized that it was, it was me who had to fight it. I was the person who cared enough about it, and was my passion, so I launched the campaign to repeal the law. That moment when you realized it was your fight, was that an actual moment? Was there a sudden eureka moment, a aha moment, or was it a gradual realization? It, it was a gradual realization. I, it was something I cared about, and I sort of took the initial, I put my foot in, found a mentor, and it, I, I hadn't actually seriously intended, when I began, I, I didn't actually believe that I was going to go through with what I was going to do. I just, it was something I was interested in. I, I, and it was, it was enough where I put in a little effort because I was interested. And that effort pulled more and more and more and more until I realized this is really my thing. This is something I care deeply about and I'm the person to do this. So what has been the most useful tools, most useful methods that you've found? So I don't like the phrase as much of an entrepreneurial spirit maybe, which is I, I, I'm not starting a business, but I take risks in that I, I'm, I'm not afraid, if you're, if you're a Nobel laureate, if you're a politician, if you're a celebrity, I don't really care how intimidating you might be or the, the social risk I might take in contacting you and being rejected. Anyone who I think can help me, I'll reach out to, I'll get in contact with them, I'll ask them for help, I'll try and I'll get them involved in the campaign. And it's, it's that I'm, I'm not afraid to take, at least in my case, it's for what helps me is cold calling or cold calling or cold emailing people to build a coalition. I'm not afraid to do that because I think it's the right thing to do and I think the people I contact will see it's right. And so I, I'm, I will do it. And that, that's been the most useful thing to me is just take the risks that need to be taken in this campaign. <laughs> what advice uh, would you have for any other uh, young activists? What, what advice do you wish you had heard when you were 16 and starting? Starting out, or even 14 when yeah. you first... So I would, I would actually go for 14 or 13 or younger, which is just take that first, be brave and take the first leap. Because that's, all, that's the hardest thing. Is for two years after the Louisiana Science Education Act, the creationism law was passed, I hated it, I knew it was wrong, and I didn't do anything. And it took me two years to make that leap to realize no one's fighting this, someone needs to fight it, and that person's me. And so take the initial leap, find something you care about, and send that email to a mentor, send that first email to a politician, whoever it is, make that leap and start going. Because once you do that, it all falls into place. Good luck.